Update. Sorry for my lack of updates on this matter. I know that the few of you who have been posting on this thread have been begging me for any further information, and I feel that it's safe now to post this. I have been running ever since I received that letter that I mentioned in the last post. It arrived at my front door along with an unmarked cardboard box. I signed for them and took them inside, where I discovered upon opening it, a collection of video cassette tapes, obviously of the show. I will just say that I've watched all of their tapes in, the, in their entirety, and they were indeed genuine. At first, you may recall that I mentioned about the apparent aging of Casey in the last few videos. That just seemed impossible, if the tapes were made in 1987, as they apparently were. Last week, I took the tapes to an expert in vi videography, and they confirmed that the tapes were, in fact, genuine. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking. Casey may have taped the final videos recently and then just spliced the film, but once again, the tapes were confirmed genuine. So I'll go further into this, despite my reluctance. I recently learned that the other reason for my friend Ben and his family moving across the country when I was young was the fact that his younger brother had been kidnapped. Due to my pokings around, police have now centered their investigation on Casey Weber. Now, to shed more light on the Casey Weber matter. In 1987, shortly after the final episode of Casey's Corner aired, Casey was arrested and charged with the murder of his son. During the evidence gathering process, investigators uncovered a trunk in Casey's bedroom containing his early writing works. Now, it is common knowledge that one of his stories was published in Esquire, a rather disturbing one that chronicled the life of a serial killer. His later works that were discovered contained details of crimes that had not been solved yet, leading to an immediate conviction and sentence for the aforementioned crimes. During the trial, when questioned about his knowledge of these crimes, the defense attorney argued for the insanity defense, stating, quote, In all my years spent practicing law, I have never seen such depravity in another human being. If my client is not found criminally insane, then we may as well all go right to prison ourselves. The sheer depth of the contempt of the crimes committed by Casey felt by his own defense attorney just goes to show how severe some of this stuff was. Anyway, it's clear that in early 1988, Casey Weber escaped from the institution where he was being held. I have enclosed in this post an interview with another user, Donna Talbot. She contacted me about a month after I made my first post on this matter, and what she had to say disturbed me deeply. The following interview was conducted via telephone. Hello? Is this Donna Talbot? Yes, speaking. Yes, this is James Corning. We exchanged emails recently upon you contacting me regarding the post about Casey's Corner. Oh yes, I remember you. You're the one that brought all of this misery back into my life. I apologize for that. Do you have time for an interview about the show? I won't take up too much of your time, but please understand. This is more for me for, than for the series of posts I've uploaded. Hmm. Well, I'm not too sure about this. How do I know what you'll do? I'll be blunt. Do you recall the letter I recently posted on this matter? Yes. How is that relevant to this conversation? I was one of the little shits mentioned in the letter. Now, I have enough reason to believe that Casey intends to make good on his threats to take care of me. Please, maybe you'll have enough information to, well, maybe figure out what to do. Well, I may not be able to give you the best information just based upon my experience, but I may be able to tell you what might happen to you. How? What I haven't mentioned to you yet was that I was stopped and nearly kidnapped by that creep. I remember waking up in the middle of the night with some guy standing outside of my window, just staring at me. I thought it was a dream every time. I remember that he would say awful things, like he was going to accept me and wear my innards like a scarf, 
and that he wanted to see me inside out. Sick shit like that. The only way that I realized it wasn't a dream was one night he was at my window again, this time holding a rope. That's when I screamed. My dad came running in, went after the man. The man, JC, as it turned out, ran off as fast as he could. Are you serious? Of course I am. Why would I make up something like this? Uh, I'm sorry, Miss Talbot. It just sounds so fantastic. How would you even know that that man was Casey? I'll tell you. My dad used to watch a show with me before the nightly news came on. He recognized Casey from the show and that was one of the things that led to his arrest. My dad's description and what, I was, and what Casey did. Oh. Look, I don't want to talk about this anymore. I already know that I won't sleep tonight. The more I talk about this, the more the memories come back and the more things just get worse. I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean to bring up old memories. I'm just trying to save myself. I don't want to be the victim of that. Donna hung up, and I was left sitting there with the dial tone sounding in my ear. I can't really express how I felt about what I learned in that phone call. I think All I'll say is that I think I'll join Donna in a sleepless night. I have nothing else to say. Update. Sorry for ending my post as abruptly as I did yesterday. Actually, I didn't even want to post any more into this, but I realized that I must because of, it, because of this morning. I woke up and checked the mail, and within the letters and bills was an unmarked envelope. I opened it and my heart sank. The letter began with, Dear James, and ended with, Sincerely, Casey M. Weber. He's found out where I live, and he's even been at my house. Does, him, does anyone have any advice for me? Update. Surprisingly, the best advice came from Donna Talbot, who I was sure would never contact me again after the disastrous phone interview. I received an email with only one word. Run. So I took her advice. I will not tell you where I am, as Casey may be monitoring this thread for any hints of my whereabouts. If Ben survived for 24 years before Casey caught up to him, I want to make the most of my time that I have left. And the only way to deal with that is to take it on myself to do something. I'm sorry, everyone, to all of you who posted your own experiences or just expressed interest, as this is quite an interesting story. I have to disappear. I will leave my email like that active for seven days as of this post, and then I'll delete it. Anyone that has any advice on how to disappear effectively, please email me. I don't know what to do, so any helpful advice is welcome.